of social network do you know? Facebook. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube. Come on, guys. Twitter. <laughs> Twitter, yeah. Snapchat, YouTube, Google Plus, all of them. And what do you use mostly? Facebook. Facebook, then? Twitter. Twitter. WhatsApp, oh, What's Instagram, yeah? Right. According to statistics, uh, the most popular social network sites are Facebook with 900 million users, uh, then goes the Twitter with 310 million users, LinkedIn 255 million users, then the list goes on like Google+, Instagram, VK, and etc. Can you believe that I was an active user of all of them? I posted pictures and short videos on Instagram. If you're my follower, then you I know what I'm talking about. I uploaded videos from different kind of events and activities on YouTube. Um, reading news on Facebook, talking, chatting on VK, WhatsApp, Viber. Um, then just sharing my favorite music on Google+. Plus telling about my current state, my certain opinion about certain things on Twitter, you know, just, just an insane, right? But, you know, what does it mean? It means that my virtual life was full of life because my real life was full of life. But, um, anyway, at some point, uh, the social networks uh, has the bad side and the other side. Like, it is good to keep in touch with the people so that you won't lose the connection with your friends, relatives. You always know who does what and where, but there is the other side of the truth. Um, the major drawbacks of them are decreased productivity, lack of privacy, and particularly time consuming. That, that was my problem, actually. And due to the Cornell University's research, social media sites can make us uh, more difficult for us to distinguish the real relationships that we foster in the real world and the numerous casual relationships that we um, that are formed through the social media and as well as the distraction leads to the less productivity and moreover it's encouraged people to be more public because intimate detail of your lives can be posted so easily well sometimes I'm extremely extroverted person. I like sharing, I like talking, I like um, with people. So, and until and I understood that, and the most uh, used one, used um, social network was Instagram. I love just, you know, sitting, and watching, scrolling, liking, commenting, answering to the questions. That was really interesting for me. But until I understood that I became so obsessive, I became so addictive so that I just could spend hours and hours just sitting. And, you know, there was a moment when I said to myself, like, uh-oh, the situation went out of control. And I just asked myself, like, do I really need this? Do I really, um, does this really worth my time? Um, is it good investment for my future? Then, okay, of course, the answer was no. And what did I do? I just restricted myself from the internet. I just deactivated my page, but I knew that I will be back, and I did, indeed, after a month. <laughs> but four amazing weeks without internet, it was just amazing, you know, I just set up my goals, I just did what I did, what I really loved. And I'm still doing, I'm full of energy, recording videos, you know, it just, this is my hobby, this is what I like to do. But now I understood that entertainment is good until it's not harmful. The grass is on the other side. The grass is always greener on the other side. It is okay, it is good just watching other people live sitting, but we better, um, we better focus on our own life. And, and as I study economics, like, there is a principle which says, there is a cost of something is what you give up to get it. So don't give so much time and don't get anything. Instead, it's, it's not the solution. So. Sometimes you need to restrict yourself. The right and the rational limitation can be a good. Thank you. A good idea. <laughs>